Good morning, and welcome back to Sherburn Public Library's Book Talk. Today, Megan and I are going to be talking about books written by presidents. Um, so we've got, I think, four different presidents we're going to talk about, and some of their books that they've written, which are pretty prolific. Their presidents can write, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so Megan, I think I'm going to let you go first. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about Jimmy Carter. Um, so he was president from uh, 77 to 81. He only served one term and he was uh, basically president during a time of um, inflation and high energy costs. So a difficult time. He was also considered an outsider by a lot of people. He didn't really have the Washington experience that a lot of politicians have. He had been a state senator and a governor. Uh, previously. So he kind of had trouble working along with Congress on a lot of things. Um, and he's probably, I would say he's best known for the Camp David Accords during his presidency, um, where he brought together Israel and Egypt to sign um, a peace treaty that is still in place today. Um, but as we were just discussing, I would say he's probably best known, especially for those of us that weren't alive during his presidency, he's probably best known for what he's done uh, since he was president. He did win the Nobel Peace Prize in 2002 um, for founding the Carter Center along with his wife. Um, they basically work to um, advance human rights around the globe and improve quality of life. They've done a lot of work to eradicate um, diseases and ensure fair elections around the world. And of course, he's also really well known for his work with Habitat for Humanity. Um, he's still, he's, I think he's 96. He's still working for Habitat for Humanity. He's still building houses. Um, he's also pretty well known for being um, very religious and um, he's written several books about his faith, but he's actually written over 30 books. Um, I think all of them since he's been president, um, everything from different memoirs, um, even about his childhood, to poetry, to books on um, his ideas of peace in the Middle East, to fiction. He actually wrote the first work of fiction by a president that was published, um, by a president of the US that was published. It's called The Hornet's Nest, a novel of the Revolutionary War. And you can, uh, we do have that available through the four county system. So um, the book that we have at our library um, that I was gonna talk about is called Faith, A Journey for All. And um, this one is, um, it's a shorter book out of all of his books, but it sort of details his own journey with faith. And he talks about um, feeling that faith is really for everyone, regardless of religious affiliation. And he also talks about how there's lots of different meanings for faith. Um, obviously, the religious meanings that we all think of, but um, also friendship, marriage, different types of faith that that um, that word can be applied to. And he talks about how he feels other people can acquire faith in their own lives. Um, it's an interesting read, and I, I think it's really uplifting, regardless of your religious beliefs. And then the other one, um, the new book that we have in our library, it's not actually by Jimmy Carter, but it's about him, is called Jimmy Carter, uh, I'm sorry, it's called His Very Best, Jimmy Carter, A Life um, by Jonathan Alter. He is the former editor at Newsweek and he's an MSNBC political analyst. And this is like a true biography. It's, it's a thick one of his whole 96 years. And he took five years uh, writing this book, Alter did. And he was, um, he had access to the whole Carter family and it's really detailed and um, it really is his entire life. Um, what I really liked was uh, there's this one quote. I hadn't really thought about the fact that because of how old Jimmy Carter is, he's really, um, he's seen so much change in this country. And I just thought this quote was really interesting from the book. Growing up in one of the meanest counties in the Jim Crow South, Carter is the only American president who has essentially lived in three centuries. His early life on the farm in the 1920s without electricity or running water, might as well have been in the 19th century. 
His presidency put him at the center of major events in the 20th century, and his efforts on conflict resolution and global health set him on the cutting edge of the challenges of the 21st century. So I just, um, I just find him really interesting. I think he's done amazing things in the 40 years, yes, 40 years since he's been president, um, and he's still going. And um, he really has... He, he's got to be the president with one of the one of the biggest collection of books that he's written, I would think, um, in such a wide variety, too. So um, definitely you can you can get most of them, I would I think, through four county. So check those out. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I remember when Jimmy Carter was president, I was in high school. Um, and yeah, I think. I do think that he is more loved now than he ever was um, because of the, his life and the way he has lived his life and in service to everyone else. He's kind of an amazing guy, I think. And I think he didn't get enough credit as president. They kind of made fun of him. They kind of, you know, but boy, he, um, what a good person he is. And I'm, I've always admired that. And, and the more, I learn about him in my life, the more I realized what, what a really great person he was. I think he was in, you know, the, he was in a, he was, presidency was not his position. And, you know, he just wasn't, that wasn't his thing that he's good at. He's really good at serving others and, and uh, inspiring others, I think. So that's great. I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad there's a really good comprehensive book about his life now. I think that will be wonderful. So I'm going to talk about George W. Bush, our 43rd president. Um, you know, Bush was president from, let's see, 2001 to 2009. He had the unfortunate um, honor of being president when 9-11 uh, happened. Um, so that was a, one of his really tough challenges, as we all know. Um, but I feel like he he did a really, uh, just my personal opinion, I think he, he came and led the country a little bit when it was over and kind of brought us together, which was a nice feeling because that was a horrible time. <laughs> so one of the most challenging things he had, of course, in was his first election in 2000 when he ran against Al Gore. Um, there was the big, uh, very close election. And then in Florida, there were some problems with the counting and you may have heard about the hanging chads and things like that. Um, so that was a, that was the first kind of really, I think, well, at least in my memory, of uh, real election problems. Um, and so, of course, we've seen more of that in the last few years. But, but um, so that was, a, that was a, a kind of a funny start for him. But um, I think, too, George Bush is in, in some ways, I would, I think of his presidency, I think he was not ready for his presidency. I, I think he and Carter are similar in the sense that I feel that he has be, come into himself and become a, a really good and inspiring kind of person since his presidency, which is kind of cool. Um, so we have a couple books by him. Um, we have his book, Decision Points, which is his discussion about, you know, when he was in office the decisions he had to make, the ones he made, the ones he wished he hadn't made or wished he'd done differently. Um, it's, it's a real, um, real well-written book. Um, you know, you get insights and, and his perspective on all of the big things that he had to make decisions on. Of course, 9-11 was one of them, but um, the war in Iraq, that decision on whether we should go in, um, things like that, that were just, uh, you know, it was, tough. So you kind of get a, like a, you know, firsthand view of what he was, what was going through his mind, which I think is a, is always a good thing. And he's a good writer apparently. So um, the other book we have by him is called Portraits of Courage. Now this is totally different. So it turns out he's kind of an artist, a painter. So what he did with this was kind of beautiful. This was, um, he interviewed and painted um, veterans. And it was a, it was kind of a, an ode to them. It was an, to honor them and their service. So he's got, there's, I don't know how many portraits in here, but there's many, many of them and they're all, there's pictures, lots of pictures in it, and they're beautiful. And it's just a very wonderful um, 
tribute to them. Um, it's called Portraits of Courage, a Commander in Chief's Tribute to America's Warriors. So I, I think this is kind of moving and I, it gives a little story about each one of them as their, um, you know, their life, what, what they, what they did and uh, why it's important. So um, that's another great one, I think, um, that we have in our library. Okay. So um, in April, he's got one called coming out called out of many one portraits of America's immigrants. Now this is, um, is so it's, as it says, these are immigrants um, that he has painted um, and he, get, and he has the stories uh, of, of each of those immigrants. And I think it's a, uh, again, I think it could be a really touching and moving kind of book because you're, you know, he, immigration was one of his, um, one of the things that he worked on when he was in, pre was, when he was a president, was president. And so I think it kind of holds a special place in his heart. Um, and he's also from Texas. So he's right on the border. So I pray, I think sometimes that hits home sometimes a little more just because you see it in action. So I look forward to that. I think that will be one we'll want to have at the library. So so that's George W. Um, I have, I'm also going to talk about Barack Obama. Um, he was our 44th president, as we probably all know. Um, Barack was president from 2008 to 2016. Uh, is that right? Yes. <laughs> Barack has written a lot of books. He's a very fine writer. Um, and you'll find um, a lot of his books are available. We have we have a couple of them at our library. Dreams of My Father um, was probably his first book. I think that was written in I don't know. It was a tw it was early on. It was this was written before he was president, and it talks about you know his life and growing up and his father and his relationship to his father who was who was absent um, in his life. I think he died early on. Um, Barack has also written um, other books. He wrote, he wrote The Audacity of Hope, Thoughts on Reclaiming the American Dream. Um, he also wrote a children's book of The I Sing, A Letter to My Daughters, which is a, a children's book. It's really great. Um, and then his most recent one is A Promised Land. Um, and we have that at our library. I don't have it with me because it was checked out, which is good. Um, but apparently this is the first of two volumes and it deals this, the first volume here starts um, with his early life and it goes all the way up to his introduction to the SEAL team, which went in to kill um, uh, Osama bin Laden. So um, it covers quite a bit of ground there. Barack writes well, but he does, he writes a lot I and mean, he's a wordy person. And you know that if you've listened to his speeches, he's very, verbose and very, um, I don't know. I, I like to hear him speak because he uses big words and, 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 and he's a, he's a very intelligent man. Um, but they said um, in re reading reviews about the book, it, it's focus is more political than personal in this one. Um, and it talked, but it does talk about him as a person. He talks about the time when he got the Nobel Pre peace prize and how he was kind of in shock and like, why are you giving that to me? Um, there was a one phrase they used, his reluctance to glory, which I think is kind of his, I always get that from him when he's talking about himself or things. Um, so let me just read this one uh, sentence from this one review in the New York Times. His reluctance to glory in any of his achievements has a particular texture the modesty of the brilliant American liberal, which is not so much false as it is familiar, like a much practiced pose. It brings an urge to say in response, look, take some credit already. <laughs> so I just thought that was kind of entertaining. Um, so I think, I think you'll, it, it's a good book in that you will get a lot uh, inside his, his, uh, his head going from young to into his political career. Um, so I highly recommend it. He's a, he's a great writer. This is what the book looks like. Um, 
And also, I didn't really talk a lot about Barack's um, presidency, but then again, he was a pretty recent president. Um, you know, Obamacare, uh, killing of Osama bin Laden, those were some of his uh, some of his featured things that he worked on when he was uh, president. So, um, yeah, so the, there's uh, lots to read. With, um, he's very prolific. And obviously, I think if this is the first volume, we're going to see a second one coming in probably another year or so. So, so yes, I highly recommend that one. I, I just think it's interesting to hear from them, especially um, just personal things. I feel like we don't always know them. Per- obviously, we don't know them personally, but <laughs> we don't necessarily right. know what they've been through. And I also, you know, there's something really going back to George Bush, there's something really endearing about who he is after his presidency that I'm really liking, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, um, I feel that way too. You know, the painting specifically, I don't know that I would have. I would never have thought that. that. <laughs> but I think it's really kind of sweet. And um, it's just interesting to see, you know, where do you go after you're, you're the president? What do you do like right. with your life? It's so yeah. interesting to see, well, with Carter, with Bush, with even with Obama, just to see like, where what are they going to do next? And right. um, I can't even imagine what that's like. And I, I think president to being just as, you know, civilian, yeah. it's like, you know, you've attained your highest goal and now what do you do? You know, um, especially when most of them were pretty young, you know, when they became president. Um, I think, I think it also points out when you read um, their personal words about what was going on and what went through their heads, I think you, well, first of all, you get a better appreciation for them as a person. Cause I think as we all know, the political system in our country really paints people into a whole, you know, you're this person or you're this person. And um, it's, it's not fair, um, but it is the way the system works, unfortunately. And I feel like it's gotten worse in the last, I don't know, in my lifetime anyway. Um, but, but I think that's, that's a, a, a good example. I mean, you, you, we misjudge these people as people, we, you know, we look at them as this bad guy that we don't like, because we don't like his, what he says, or the way he walks, or his personal policies, or whatever it is, or his political party, or whatever. Um, but when you read their words coming from their own heart, then you, you know, you see them as a person. And that's not what happens in the political theater. We see it's a theater. We see just what they want us to see with their masks or their party wants us to see with their, you know. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I think um, reading presidents uh, points of view and their, and their, and their personal journeys is a good way to really understand those people. And it's too bad that we don't get a better peek at them in that sense when they're actually, you know, running and in, in the presidency, because that might help soften a few people to, uh, you know, being more open to listening and talking and reaching across the aisle, so to speak. So, but yeah, so yeah, we uh, definitely, we have, and we have other books by other presidents in our library. Um, Certainly. um, Well, there are probably no books by Washington or Lincoln, but we certainly have a lot of books about them um, and lots of other presidents. So please come in and, and uh, uh, check them out. Okay. So Megan's going to give us one more um, before we go. Okay. So I'm just going to talk briefly about uh, Joe Biden. Obviously he's just become president, but um, he did serve as a U.S. Senator from Delaware for 36 years. I did not realize it was that long. Um, and then, of course, he was vice president under Obama for eight years and is just now the president. Um, he does have one book that is available in the Four County System. We don't have it at our library, but it was a memoir that he wrote actually when he was still a senator. Um, so it, I think it's from 2007. And it basically um, just talks about, you know, growing up and uh, lo- obviously losing his first wife and daughter in that awful accident, um, becoming a senator and then meeting um, Dr. Jill and marrying her and his first run for president in 1988. Um, 
So I, it's kind of an interesting idea of, I guess it's sort of like the Obama book, um, Dreams from My Father, that they were written before they were president. So it's kind of interesting to see what's important to them before they become president. Who, who were they before that? So his newer book um, that we do have in our library is called Promise Me, Dad, A Year of Hope, Hardship, and Purpose. And um, this is a... <laughs> This is a tough one. Um, <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it's really good, but it, it's definitely a difficult subject. It is basically a memoir that he wrote about, I think it's from 2014 to 2015, a year in his life. And it's um, obviously he was vice president at the time, but it's also dealing with finding out that his son, Bo has uh, brain cancer and is probably at the time they weren't sure if he was going to survive. Uh, so basically trying to figure out, you know, how, how do you do the work of vice president while, you know, <laughs> your son is possibly dying, going through treatment and possibly dying and trying to just um, rely on your family and your faith and, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's, it just, it didn't dawn on me that he was going through that while he was traveling around the world, while he was vice president. I can't even imagine. Um, he talks about making the decision after Bo passed away that he just couldn't run in 2016 for president. He just was too, he was too consumed by grief at the time, but um, he was, you know, very busy and still having to deal with all of that and um, be there for his family. And he did, um, this book is called Promise Me Dad. There's a, there's a quote, basically the, the title comes from um, what, you know, at the time when Bo was going through treatment, he had said to his father, promise me, dad, give me your word that no matter what happens, you're going to be all right. And um, Bo had always wanted his father to run for president and he, um, he hoped that he still would, even if he passed away. And of course he wasn't able to do it in 2016, but um, he, he, he hoped he would. And actually Joe talks about the fact that he wished that Bo had been able to run for president. So it's, it's a tearjerker. It's really well-written and it really gives you that perspective of both, he's just a dad and he's a grandfather, but he's also the vice president at the same time and going through this all in one year. Um, definitely recommend this one. It's really good, but it is sad. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that would be, wow. And again, that gives you insight into the real person, which I think is really, it's just wonderful because then you like, you do appreciate them more and you understand where they're coming from and it makes their whole um, public life, you know, it, it puts it in a different light for you, I think. So that's wonderful. Yep. I look forward to finding out what it's going to be like in the next four years. So, well, this is wonderful. I think now we've done, gone through four presidents. And like I said, we have um, books from many presidents. And of course, through the four county library system, you can get even more. Um, so come in and check them out. Uh, thanks for listening. And we will see you next week where we are doing movie. Black artists. Yes. Movies featuring black artists, either directors, actors, whatever. So, yeah. So that'll be a fun one too. So come and join us and we'll see you at the library. Thanks. Thanks.